once again, Phoenix, to you are watching the Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis. He is the founder of Asset Preservation Wealth and Tax. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. Stuart, how are you doing this week? Uh, unbelievable here. I'm uh, struggling through tax season, but we're having a good time. Well, I do have to mention out to all of your viewers right now, we would like to congratulate you. This is your 100th episode of the program. So much information, so much education that you've done. How do you feel about 100 episodes wrapped up together here at your Tempe man, Broadcast Studios? Man, you know what? It all started back in a studio in uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, a few years ago. Um, no, this, this this show has been a blessing. Uh, you know, a lot of financial advisors had a tough time during COVID, right? They couldn't meet with people. Uh, what the show did is it really did uh, allow us to be able to communicate our, our vision, our, our thought about retirement. Um, to a wider crowd, and, and it happened right at the right time. So right as, you know, COVID uh, came upon us and we were unable to do our live events, TV really did uh, change the direction of our company. So thank you to the audience for watching. Appreciate you guys uh, and uh, look forward to 100 more. Exactly. Well, folks, uh, so much that goes into the program. Stuart prepares every single week for what kind of events are going on right now. On today's program, he wants to discuss income planning and retirement for you, the viewers, Social Security, and even tax planning. Of course, that's a big part of the firm and what you do. So uh, wh where do you really start with that income plan? What, what, is, what is the genesis for you? Well, I think most importantly, it's just really important to just make sure you have a plan. Uh, you know, I think there's some basics we've been talking about here for the last few years that we think you need to make sure you do. Number one, make sure you have a living trust, right? Have an estate plan. Um, I think the income plan is crucial. Knowing where to pick, you know, the, the sources of your, of your retirement income. All right. We also want to make sure that you understand what kind of risk you're taking inside your portfolio. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. people, you know, I, I may sound like a broken record. It, it really is the mantra of many of my shows. But I really do think that people have become detached from where we are today, what kind of risks they're actually taking because of how people have been, been, been absolutely desensitized to the, to the unbelievable market for the last There is years. some research out there, but uh, let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. that. And, and I know that on our weekly radio program on KFYI, KTAR, we, we talk an hour about mm -hmm. what's going on in the markets. But here, you've got a format where we can show some slides and actually kind of visually help people figure out what's happened over the last couple of decades. Can we maybe talk about what happened in the markets? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first place we start is by taking a wider view of the S&P 500. 500 index, and, and this looks all the way back uh, into the 90s, this slide that we have. It's our S&P 500 slide. And, and if you take a look, um, for the last 12 years or so, the market has just been on this absolute meteoric rise. And, you know, the market's done un unbelievably well. But I think what people have done is they've gotten used to those returns as normal. Like, hey, they're always going to do this. So, mm -hmm. so when we see people retire, what they're doing is basing their retirement and whether the, whether or not they're ready for retirement based on those assumed 10% rate of returns. And honestly, it, it's it's a really tough thing because you know we've talked about sequence of returns all the time uh, when it comes to uh, you know our radio show and, and what sequence of returns is is about it, understanding that it matters when your market goes up and down. If you if you look at a mm -hmm. ten year straight up market and then you invert the returns, you know it, it dramatically changes how much money you have. And so if if you're retiring in a down year like what we saw last year, well, it can really change the outcome of your retirement. So I think you really need to plan on understanding that, you know, um, that the markets don't always go up, right? Like I said, a blind chicken could have made money for the last 12 years. So for a lot of the self-investors, a lot of the people that, um, you know, relied on their 401k and they just kind of picked what they thought sounded good, Honestly, it didn't make a big difference. Everyone did really well. But now that we're seeing this sort of volatility, 
I think you have to understand that the market doesn't always go up, you know, consistently. Uh, let's go back to the S&P slide, if you would. And if you look at that S&P slide, look at the, that first hump on the left, right? So the, the first hump going up was the dot-com boom. Going down, the dot-com crash. Then we had the next one going up for five years, and then it crashed again in 2008 9 and, you know, if you take a look, the S&P 500 from the year 2000 to 2012 really didn't make any money, right? Went down, then up, then down, then back up, and it took 12 years to get back to square. So, Spike, what I ask you this is, what if that happens again now, mm -hmm. right? If you guys have investments in the audience out there and you're assuming it's going to make a 10% rate of return and that'll make you comfortable in retirement, well, what if we repeat that period from 2000 to 2012, right? Because what good news do we have right now? What what good news are we seeing from e economic point of view or financial point of view? Apparently, we are in a recession because they talk about two quarters of a, a lack of growth right now. We still have incredibly high inflation. We still have a war uh, over in Europe. Uh, just a, a lot an of expanding war. Yeah, and it's, it's an expanding war. And, you know, it's... It, we're in crazy times right now. So I think what's most important here, uh, if, if I impress nothing else upon you, it's to, to impress that, look, we are in crazy times right now. Having a plan matters. It matters where you pull your money from. It matters what your allocations look like. And if you are in the same portfolios today that you were two years ago, that is a problem in many cases. Why? Because I'm telling you, oftentimes people are taking way too much risk for this current environment. And if you have those concerns, you should look at your own portfolio. Isn't the simpler level lever to pull uh, to just go over to bonds right now? What, what, what happened with the bond market last year? No, it's, you know, it's, it's a great question. I mean, quite honestly, you know, people know that bonds have historically been kind of the, quote, safe investment, right? Well, let me show you a chart. And this is the 10-year the treasury chart chart. And this historical chart will show you what interest rates have looked like um, on the 10-year treasury for the last, um, you know, well, since the 80s here or late 70s. If you take a look at that big spike initially on the left side, uh, it, it goes from about 7.5% all the way up to 15% up in, you know, into 1980, 1981 there. And um, that's when we saw a lot of the, you know, the bond crashes that occurred because of this spike in interest rates. But literally for 35 years, interest rates have fallen. And I think most people realize that when interest rates um, drop, uh, bond values go up. And when interest rates uh, rise, bond values go down. Well, remember, for 35 years, interest rates have fallen. So it's created this nice stability in bonds and bond values. So when people have shifted away from individual bonds to uh, bond funds, well, guess what? You, you lost the ability to have a maturing asset that, you know, you can basically get your principal back from. Now there's actually, you know, principal, you know, uh, principal risk mm -hmm. to your bond funds, right? And so last year, what we saw is the interest rates um, more than double in, in a single year. And if you look back from the bottom of COVID, you know, they went from a half a percent all the way up to 4%, now down to about three and a half or so. Um, you know, they're, they're fluctuating all over the place, very volatile. But what it did last year is it essentially created a lot of risk to bonds. Let me show you, I have this chart that I want to show you that just shows last year's S&P 500 uh, overlapped with last year's um, uh, 20 year treasury ETF, TLT, which is an iShares ETF. And if you take a look at that, the market's down 19.5% or so. If you take a look, it, that's if you're aggressive and in the market, uh, S&P 500. If you are in the 20 year treasury ETF, you're down almost 33% there. So I think you have to realize that, you know, bonds can provide a lot of risk to a portfolio also. So if you're in a position where you're concerned about rising interest rates and you know you have a lot of bond exposure and you thought you were doing the right thing by being conservative, well, maybe you're actually adding more risk than you really understand. And what we're offering today to the audience is if, if you do have concerns that you're taking too much risk, what we want you to do is pick up your phones. We're going to pull up a QR code on the screen right now. Click on that QR code. That'll take you to APSITaxes.com. We are offering you a complimentary 
portfolio review. We'll take a look at whether you're taking too much bond risk in your portfolio if you are a conservative investor. Maybe there's some better alternatives out there than what you're currently doing, and we'd be glad to give you a second opinion. Maybe you're in the same portfolio that you were a couple years ago, assuming that the market's going to keep roaring forever. So if you have concerns about the risk that you're taking, the fees that you're paying, or any sort of tax concerns regarding your portfolio, pick up the phone. Give us a call at 833-652-7829. Or once again, even easier, click on that QR code. And it'll take you to our website. You can sign up for that complimentary portfolio review. And because we're swamped right now, we can only do it for the first 10 callers or first 10 people to click on that QR code. But we'd be glad to help. Just take action. Give us a call. Stuart, we've got to take a very short break. Folks, call the phone number you see right here. As Stuart says, for the first 10 callers, we want to do a complimentary review. Are you surprised by how much you lost in the markets last year? Did you think you were invested conservatively? We want to review not just your stock portfolio, but also your bonds, your entire holdings to make sure that you are invested the way that you need to be for these volatile markets. Call 833-652-7829. More of the Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis right after this. People are really concerned about outliving their money. Inflation, taxes, volatility in the markets, legacy. That's what people are really concerned about. Listen, I love what I do. When a client of mine can know with total confidence that they're gonna be okay. At Asset Preservation, that's exactly what we do. Not only do we look at your investments, we look at your taxes and estate planning as well. We don't leave any stone unturned. That is what a real holistic shop does. Provide a very clear roadmap so that you know it's okay to enjoy retirement. Success is being able to sleep at night. And at the end of the day, what we provide at Asset Preservation is not only the market expertise by, by institutional money managers that are some of the biggest and best in the world, but we also provide complete advice. You need to make sure you have a plan. What you can expect from us is to let you know the truth about your portfolio. Welcome back to the Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. I love hosting the shows with you. Uh, I like to just mention every now and then, I am a graduate of the Cronkite School of Broadcasting right here at Arizona State University. So I love doing the broadcasting here with you. We've also got our radio show on KFYI, KTAR. So much information that you put out there for all of the state of Arizona. And I think one of the biggest questions that you are constantly getting is, where do I draw my income from now? Well, the good news is we've got Social Security, right? Yeah. Or is that good? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think often, you know, people are concerned about how solid the program is. You know, we'll, we'll get people all the time, Spike, that'll say, hey, you know what, I'm going to take it as early as possible because we, we're, we're thinking it's going, you know, out. It'll be defunct. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I have always said that, you know, I don't believe that Social Security will ever be touched because mm. senior citizens are the biggest voting block in America. But believe it or not, in 2015, I was proven wrong. And, and you know, we saw one of the biggest ratings of our Social Security benefits, where they got rid of uh, the file and restrict, file and suspend options, a bu bunch of different filing options. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important to make sure you have a Social Security plan. You know, when people come into our into our um, office for their complimentary re review oftentimes they're surprised by you know we send an email if you sign up for an appointment we send you an email with what we think you should bring to get the most out of the appointment and listen you can bring everything or bring nothing uh, the more you bring the more you'll get out of the complimentary review um, of course and and on there we say to bring your social security statements and and the reason is we want to do an analysis of when to take your benefits. And everybody's situation is different. So the one thing we suggest is you stop the water cooler talk. It's it's some of the most dangerous stuff that people can do is take advice from their buddies right. that work with them because they're the smart guy at work or they're, everyone's situation is different. And, and quite honestly, you know, just keep your blinders on, talk to a professional, make sure you get professional help in here. Because look, we have clients all the time that come to see us. And, and when I said they're surprised that we're talking about Social Security, it's because look, they've done their job. They put away $500,000, $1 million, $2 million, $3 million into a IRA or 401k. They did what they were told to do. And so they've, they, they have amassed this money and they really wanna plan that. But what we see with Social Security that really surprises people is that actuarily, 
people are getting, um, on average, if you live to your full actuarial lives, you know, people are, we're seeing between a million and two million dollars of benefit in Social Security over a couple's lifetime. So, mm -hmm. so if you're going to plan your $500,000 or million dollar retirement plan, why aren't we planning your million dollar Social Security? Right, or two right. million dollars. But there's a lot of knee-jerk reaction out there right now mm -hmm. of, I think, people coming to your office saying, I'm going to take it as soon as possible because I'm not sure that it's going to be there. Again, I want to ask you, how solid do you think Social Security is? What about for somebody who hasn't taken it yet? So let's say we're 60-something. Could you see a reduction down the road? Well, so uh, what I would say is just remember, when Social Security was created, it was created uh, at a time when, uh, you know, by the time you actually could file, people were actually dead by that time, <laughs> right? So, so, you know, people would live a year or two on Social Security. Now yeah. people are collecting it for 20 years. And, you know, the number of employees to retirees is dramatically different as well, right? So it used to be, I think, something like 50 to one. It was there were 50 workers out there for every one person who was taking Social Security. Yeah. Now it's dwindled all the way down to almost to a three to one. Yeah, and, and eventually it'll be one to one as the baby boomers retire. And so, um, you know, it, the math has changed dramatically. So it's a really tough thing, you know, to, to figure out. And so um, in terms of it going out of business, I think I wouldn't be too worried about that, but I would be worried about how they're going to fix the problem and I've said it in a previous show that the one thing that scares me the most is when Lindsey Graham and uh, Bernie Sanders agree on something right totally total conservative and a you know complete you know I mean I think he says he's a socialist right I mean I, or he's a social you know, social leftist whatever, yeah, I mean, whatever very audience. far probably the farthest left person we have you know in the Senate and and when they agree on something that's scary and and, and what they agree on is and I'm quoting People that make more money don't need Social Security as badly. So that is the, the, the one thing to be concerned about because now they're saying it's acceptable to take away people's um, Social Security or to penalize them more as you have more money, right? Just kind of mm -hmm. keywords in there. So who are they going to penalize? Well, you know, look, they're going to increase taxes, right? We're, we're in the most efficient tax window in history. We don't believe their, you know, taxes are going down. In fact, if Congress doesn't act, taxes are going up in 2026. Um, but when it comes to Social Security, the biggest concern is, you know, understanding that Social Security was never meant to be taxable. It was never meant to be taxed. But it became taxable for the first time in 1983 and, and then became more taxable under Bill Clinton. Now, here's the thing to realize is that those thresholds that were set for your income, for the high income earners, mm -hmm. haven't changed since they were originally created. So the threshold set in 1983 hasn't changed since then. And what is, what is that number? Is it something like 25000 or something? 25000 as an individual or 32000 as a couple. Now, that $32,000 number, I just did the equation the other day, and it's about $110,000 in today's income numbers if you adjust it for inflation. So what it was meant to do was tax these higher income earners. But do you feel like you're a high income earner at $32,000 of what they call provisional income? Yeah. Well, no, not at all. No, right? Well, what you also have to understand is that provisional income calculation includes 50% of your Social Security. So Social Security was never meant to be taxed. But now, as Lindsey Graham and Bernie Sanders agree that, you know, hey, we're going to be attacking the people that have higher income. Well, that's you guys. It's people that have saved their money. So if you've put away all your money into IRAs and 401ks, um, and 403Bs or thrift savings plans that are tax deferred, well, guess what? Even though Elizabeth Warren wants to be able to tax wealth, that's an impossible thing to do, and I don't think ever going to happen. But what's really easy to do is tax taxable income. And as you take it out of your IRAs or your 401Ks, those are going to be the people that I believe are going to be the target of funding Social Security mm -hmm. in re into retirement. So in my opinion, I think the idea is to create some real tax efficiency in retirement, to have a real plan as it pertains to your underlying investments. It's, it's, if you, it, a tax plan isn't part of your plan, you're really missing out. So as a financial advisor, it's not something that you want somebody to say, well, just 
turn on your Social Security whenever you feel like it, and I'll help you with the investments. You want this as part of the discussion when they come in. Yeah, absolutely. And look, I understand that most financial advisors are not comfortable talking about tax. You know, when, when people watch our show, they'll go back to their advisor, and the advisor will say, hey, well, yeah, go talk to your CPA. We'd be glad to do that Roth conversion or that tax plan. It, well, guess what? And then the, C, the CPA says, go talk to your advisor, and nothing ever gets done. So if you're concerned that you've been abandoned in terms of a tax plan, or you have concerns that your income is going to be too high, more than $32,000 of provisional income in retirement, what we're offering to do is give you that complimentary portfolio review. We'll, we will take a look at not only the risks that you're taking in your portfolio and the fees that you're paying, but we'll take a look at when the best way to optimize your Social Security is when to file, uh, but we'll also talk about how to potentially unwind that tax time bomb that you've been building up by doing the right thing, by putting your money away. But you have to take action. If you pick up your phone, click on that QR code, we'd be glad to give you that complimentary portfolio review. Or we have operators standing by right now. If you give us a call at 833-652-7829, I know it's the weekend. I know you believe that you'll call on Monday, but people never do. Once you delay, you forget about it. So if you take action now, we'd be glad to take, you know, to help you with this, uh, what should be your New Year's resolution. Make sure that you set your own goals for your own financial retirement success. Call 833-652-7829. And you've got to take advantage of this right now because we're only taking the first 10 callers. We're in the midst of tax season right now and everyone's trying to do their planning. So call as soon as you can. More of the Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis right after this. Right now the market is a big mess. And oftentimes people feel lost. So while most people are scared, you need to know that you're gonna be okay. I'm sure you have a lot of concerns about whether your portfolio really fits you. And if you need help, all you have to do is give us a call. At Asset Preservation, what we offer is a complimentary portfolio review. We can provide that fresh set of eyes to give you that second opinion. You can't get a second opinion from the guy who gave you the first. You want to make sure you're dealing with a fiduciary. We'll give you that fiduciary perspective. If you have a relationship with a financial advisor that you don't entirely enjoy, I think that's a problem because these relationships are not meant to be short term. They're meant to last a lifetime. You don't want to deal with people you don't like. If you have concerns about your portfolio, you need to give us a call. Welcome back to the Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. Show 100. First, I also want to address, you did the vast majority of them with Cynthia DeFazio. She will be back with you. She's a wonderful host, wonderful broadcaster as well. Um, but for your viewers out here, I, I really want to go through, because it was a wonderful discussion we had one lunch, about diversification. A lot of you might think that you're being diversified by using the 10 or 20 different funds that might be in your 401k at work, or maybe you and your spouse have two different sets of portfolios, mm -hmm. and that's diversification. But you said the diversification isn't just about the investing. Yeah, so, so there's multiple kinds of diversification. I think what most people talk about when they hear about diversification uh, under modern portfolio theory is diversification of their investments. And, and oftentimes what we see is people even get that part wrong. So we'll see people that come in when we do a complimentary review and they'll have 50 different funds inside their portfolio spike and, and they're saying, look, I've got all these different funds, different companies. But what our, what our analysis will show is whether or not they're truly diversified from an investment perspective. And, and what we do is look at, you know, if you have this growth fund and this big company fund, well, if they both react identically to the market, then they're not diversified. They do the same thing, right? They're, they're what we call highly correlated. So the first step is to look at whether or not your investments are truly diversified. But what I think you were getting at is to take a look at a deeper look at diversification. So it's not just about your diversification of your investments. But in our opinion, one of the most important things to do is think about the diversification of perspectives. And, and we talk about mm. this all the time. You know, if you're dealing with a financial advisor and they're the ones picking the funds for you and they say, hey, you know what, uh, Mrs. Jones, I really like this fund and this fund. I think you should get into this and we'll move you over there. Well, you know, um, they, they put you in all of these funds and they, it's because they like them. But my question to you is this. You've worked your entire life for this money. 
Are you willing to bet your entire life savings and your entire retirement on that one advisor being right? Because they're not always right. It's a scary risk to, to assume that the advisor in front of you is going to you know, have this crystal ball to know exactly where the markets are going, which is why at Asset Preservation, what we do differently is we hire multiple money managers. So if somebody, for example, you know, has a million dollars in their portfolio for easy math, we may have $300,000 in our algorithm money manager. Now, our, our algorithm is basically, the manager has uh, basically um, identified six distinct stages in the economic cycle, and they believe that there are different uh, parts of the cycle where different investments mm -hmm. will do well, right? So it's a very, very purely tactical position. Then we have um, one of our money managers, which is one of the largest money managers in the world, and um, they are more strategic by nature. And, and the difference is they're not so much trying to time the market. They're just looking for general trends and so forth. And then we have another money manager named David Young, who spent 14 years at PIMCO and, um, you know, absolute just genius guy, you know, he's, um, you know, this, this great guy with worked with great companies, but, um, you know, the, the one thing he does is he, you know, he's from Newport beach, kind of conservative California. If that, if that's actually a thing, but I, <laughs> there, are there, yeah, are there, there are parts, I was there, I was in Newport beach, uh, last summer and uh, there were Trump trains going on boats. So, I mean, there is conservative <laughs> California. I know, look, I went to Berkeley, so I wasn't from conservative California, but, um, you know, the point I'm making is that there there are three um, there are three, you know, different money managers I'm referring to so that if one of them gets it wrong, it doesn't bring down your entire your entire retirement success. Right. And so um, you want to make sure that th no matter how you know, competent you believe your advisor is or no, no, you know, no matter how competent you believe you are at self picking that you really identify um, whether or not it's all based on one point of view. You know, if all your mutual funds are from the same company, that's a questionable tactic because you know what? What if they're wrong? What if their, their analysis of the market is wrong? So if you're concerned that you are completely undiversified, right? Or you're just curious mm -hmm. about it, then feel free to reach out. We'd be glad to help you out and take a look uh, through our complimentary portfolio review, how diversified you really are. But you have to take action, pick up your phone, click on that QR code, or even easier, we have operators standing by now. Give us a call at 833-652-7829. Take action today, we'd be glad to help. Stuart, I know that goal setting is incredibly important to you, and this is <laughs> not going to fit into your diet, but happy 100 shows. Uh, it, Thank you so much for all that you do and all the education, but even though it's 100 shows, <laughs> you've probably helped thousands of people as a financial advisor here in Arizona. Thank you so much. We'll be back again next week. Call 833-652-7829 for your complimentary review. Thanks a lot for watching. Yeah,